actually in La Liga today. Comfortable win for Real Madrid away from home at 3-0 against Cadiz, which puts them top of the table. Uh, level on points with Atletico at Madrid. Atleti, of course, with a game in hand on Real Madrid. Barca with two matches still to play uh, ahead of their rivals. Meanwhile, Real Madrid president Florentino Perez mm. has given his second interview of the week. Yes, as Gab joins us along with Jan. Uh, and Gab, he is very much doubled down on what he said in his first interview, basically saying the Super League is on standby, but we have to do something because football will be dead if we don't. Yeah, uh, he's insisting. He, he's insisting on this, and he's motivated by by, by the, the the humongous losses that the, the, the big Cubs uh, have incurred as a result uh, of COVID. And he insists the the project isn't done. He says the the project has been going on for. Uh, for, 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 for three years, but then, of course, minutes later, he said, well, maybe we didn't explain our project very well because we were never given the opportunity, and to which most people would say, well, gee, you've been working on it for three years. Uh, you've, uh, uh, you had, you've been negotiating with UEFA for six months. You signed a freaking agreement uh, with UEFA saying that you were happy with the new Champions League uh, um, format on Friday, and then on Sunday... You come out and you go in a totally di different direction. I think you've had plenty of chances. He also said that, you know, uh, this project that he's been working on for three years is necessary because of COVID, which might lead you to wonder, gee, did he know that the pan global pandemic was coming? <laughs> uh, he said that uh, uh, in England, you have a situation where six big clubs lose money and the other 14 all make money, which I think would be news to a lot of people uh, in England. And he said the same thing in Spain. He said Atletico Madrid, Barcelona and Real Madrid all lose money. The other 17 clubs are all rolling in money, which, again, just simply isn't true. And, you know, look, I, I feel a little bad because there are legitimate reasons. These clubs do have some legitimate arguments to be made. They have legitimate concerns, which is why they negotiated with UEFA, which is why they, we, we've gone to this new Champions League format. None of those legitimate concerns are being articulated by Florentino Perez, other than this sort of generic stuff about how young people don't watch the games. And uh, he mentioned, oh, who, watch, who wants to watch Elche against Valladolid? Nobody's watching on television. This is boring. This is rubbish. Uh, you're not going to get anything done talking that way. And you're not making a good case for yourself. And, you know, I, I, I got a text from, from somebody at, at one of those uh, Super League clubs uh, who was listening in. And it was just three letters, S-M-H, shake my head. Why does he keep talking, Gab? <laughs> he keeps talking because, well, first of all, nobody else will, right? Nobody else, even Andrea Agnelli has come out and said, you know, look, it's obviously not going to work now. Let me, let me step aside. And look, it's a fair thing to him. He's the only one putting his face forward to this. You didn't hear anybody else make, make a case for this other than him, and, and to a lesser degree, uh, Andrea Agnelli. Everybody else, from, from Glazer to John W. Henry, all these other people were, were, were content for Florentino to go and do the, the heavy lifting. That said, he's not helping their cause. He's not helping their case. Um, and I think he's talking because he is surrounded partly by yes-men. He's surrounded by a group of people who, who genuinely believe that Real Madrid comes first above everything else. And look, after all, he is the Real Madrid president. It's his job to look after Real Madrid's interests. And if they can cut a better deal for themselves uh, by whatever means necessary, he's going to do that. And, and that's, that's an echo chamber of people around him who point to all the European Cups and Champions Leagues he's won and how successful they are. And, 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 and I think they just validate everything he says. But it's obvious from the start, and this is the other thing, even if you buy his argument, if your goal is Real Madrid is to deliver the Super League, um, you know, whatever you may think of it, they've gone about it completely the wrong way, the wrong way strategically. They lost all the leverage they would have had in terms of bullying UEFA over it. They, they didn't get their point across. Um, and the whole thing was just, was just, it wasn't just bad for football, in my opinion, but it was also absolutely incompetently executed. And, you know, that is on the people who were, who were leading this. Florentino Perez, Andrea Agnelli, uh, the Glazers, and, uh, and, and, and the people at Liverpool. Yeah, and he's coming across completely deluded. Nobody has yet paid the fee for leaving. We're almost all still in this. They have not left yet. <laughs>
Well, you know, Dan, when I saw his quotes tonight and when I read it and I saw the strategy of these uh, 12, uh, and I, I was thinking, should I take it seriously? Or should I just start laughing, making jokes? What should, what should we do? Because these are people in their profession, very successful in their different things they've done, the projects they've done all over. In football, like the, the, the guys at Liverpool, they got Jurgen Klopp in, great man, the, one of the best coaches around. You get great players in, uh, Real Madrid get great players in, Zinedine Zidane and so on and so on. So, you want to do a project like this, it was like, like my 18-year-old daughter <laughs> will do a project in school. And, 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 and I'm thinking, is that too harsh on my daughter? It's, it's like unbelievable how, how amateurish this all is done. And Perez tonight is talking about the depth. And I understand that. Gab got a vital point. He, he doesn't hide. Maybe he should, but he doesn't. Uh, and he's talking out and, uh, uh, about the, the need for Real Madrid. We don't have money. Well, yesterday, they signed David Alaba. Uh, David Alaba, who is like holding out now for three, four months to get more money of Real Madrid. And I don't, I don't think he's reduced his price the, la the last months. So th the thing is that in every profession, if you don't have money, you have to lower your costs. And that is the only key that people understand. And, and, and he says also tonight some, that they don't understand our world. I will say that 99.99% .99 of the whole, all football fans in the world, they so understood the world of these people. I mean, this what happened the, the, in these 48 hours. Never have we seen someone so much understanding this world. Imagine the, 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 the successful thing they've done. They have made FIFA and UEFA look like, I, I, I use the metaphor, the foundation of Mother Teresa. And it's like <laughs> unbelievable. Nobody could do that. Yeah, but couldn't, you, couldn't you hire the best lawyer or the best strategic or the best presentation officer or call it whatever you want no you do it all by yourself and and i th i think and gab said it this text he got from i think they're embarrassed to be honest yeah, gab this is very much the picture that he's trying to paint is that, that uefa have come out and slapped this down and the monopoly that they have and i think everyone agrees that definitely there could be changes made but they're doing it as Jan said, in completely the wrong way. He came out and said there are only 40 Chelsea fans protesting uh, in the, before the match, and we know who put them there, as if UEFA paid <laughs> these Chelsea supporters to go and protest the Super League. What are you doing, man? Well, to be fair, I think he probably has a point. You know, I, I live near Stamford Bridge. I saw a whole bunch of sort of... <laughs> Uh, Slavic-looking guys in leather jackets. I, I think those are uh, Alexander Cheferin's uh, uh, nephews. That he sent down there. Look, you can see the pictures. You can see it's more than 40 people. Why are you saying this? You know, it, it, it sounds like, I don't know if you, those who are old like me will remember uh, the, the Iraq war and like Saddam Hussein's minister of information who's, yeah, who's standing yeah, yeah, out yeah. there as the bombs are falling and say, everything is peaceful here in Baghdad, nothing's going on. You know, and you see the American tanks rolling behind him. I mean, come on, man. Um, I, this is, he's talking, I think, to a very, very narrow audience who are saying, who look at him and say, you know what? You're the only person who can, who can save Real Madrid from this yeah. debt, which by the yeah. way, isn't true. Real Madrid have an enormous debt. But it's a debt that's manageable. Real Madrid are a huge institution. What they probably can't do, as Jan said, is they can't manage a debt and go and, and throw money around the way, the way they've done before. But guess what? Very few people can. There's mm -hmm. been a global pandemic. European football is losing between six and, and eight million or six and a half and eight, eight and a half million dollars in two years. And, and the big clubs are bearing the brunt of this. So that's not in question. But instead of going on by this, you talk about conspiracies. You talk about how, ooh, there was, there, 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 there was one English club that, that wasn't really committed to this, and, and they turned the others. I mean, sowing all sorts of, of, of doubts and conspiracies. Let me tell you this. Alexander Sheffrin is not that powerful a guy. He can't go and tell those fans. By the way, City fans? You think City fans? You think, you think City fans like Alexander Sheffrin? Who, whose organization, you know, banned them for two years from Europe and they had to go to cast? No, this is nothing to do. These aren't a bunch of, uh, of puppeteers at UEFA uh, maneuvering people. This was, it's an organic rejection of the customers, the people who are going to go and buy this product, um, saying, we don't want this kind of change. And that is his 
tremendous screw up. And it's not about UEFA being angels or being good because there's a lot of flaws over there too. It's just that on this occasion, they did what they were supposed to do. They looked out for their stakeholders, the clubs, the federations, the fans, the players, uh, the coaches, everybody came together. So, you know, this is the reality here. Well, what's, what's interesting, Ali, we're both fathers to teenagers. Yep. It's banging on about this this uh -huh. 16 to 24-year-old and how they, 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 they've got no attention span. <laughs> yeah. uh -huh. they, can't, they can't watch a match. My boy will play Fortnite among us and then sit down and watch Manchester City. But, you know, it, it just... Why? Mm -hmm. well, where is he getting this information from? Clearly, somebody has given him at some survey mm -hmm. that's asked three kids whether or not they like football and they've gone no and he's just rolled with it. Well... Let's take him at his word and say, yeah, this project has been going on for three years and we've worked uh, around the clock until 1 a.m. to make sure that we put together the presentation that we wanted. Right. In those three years, whenever these 12 owners got together and they were talking about, okay, this is how we're going to present this and this is the person who we want to be the spokesperson <laughs> of our group. Let's go and appeal to the younger generation with... <laughs> this stuffy old man who has an absolute disconnect with the young generation. But he's the one, the yeah. funny grandpa, who's going to come in and really gain and garner their attention. It just goes back to the initial premise that we've talked about. This has been so disorganized and so all over the place and so like, yeah, we're together, but we're together if it works. If this doesn't work, then everybody scatters and everybody covers their own back. And this is exactly what's happening here. They expected pushback. They expected a backlash, but not quite what they got. And because they got the backlash and the, the pushback that they got, then everybody went into their corners and everybody is just saying, hey, we're sorry. We're sorry. We didn't know. We didn't mean to. And yet Florentino Perez, the stuffy old guy, the funny grandpa, he's still out there saying, the kids, we're doing this for the kids. Come on, man. We're better than this. Or are we? That's, a, that's, that's really the question. Are we better than this? We should be. But the truth of the matter is, I don't think this is the end of it. And we'll be hearing more from Florentino as time goes on. Well, thank you very much for watching ESPN on YouTube. For more sports highlights and analysis, be sure to download the ESPN app. And for live streaming, premium content, and let's not forget as well, ESPN FC, seven days a week. Subscribe to ESPN+. Plus.